Just joining us today on the show, we're talking about what's next for triple C MPs in Parliament. Should they remain in Parliament or should they pull out? Uh, that class, I'm sending you the mic to become a speaker. Please do accept the mic from the end and then we can have a conversation around uh, the issue of Parliament this morning. Should they pull out? Should they remain in Parliament? What's next for triple C MPs? Guys, please do request the mic this morning. I want to hear your thoughts around that as we continue to have these conversations daily around politics and current affairs. Please do share the link of this space on your timeline this morning as well uh, so people can join and we have this conversation. Good morning to you, Douglas. Um, pulling out of the Parliament or remain... I think it's a little bit too late for them to be able to pull out of the parliament at this point. It doesn't it, it doesn't change anything actually. If they do remain, we've at least we've got some few people that could be able to try to make a voice uh, for the majority of Zimbabweans in this case. But if the, the thing should have been structured that they should have pulled out or actually not participated uh the 2023 elections in august without any reforms because at this without reforms they were not going to be able to have any chance against zano pf and with also no proper constitution triple c and the other parties have just made sure that they've sanitized zano pf they're likely to have a two-thirds majority which was the case from the beginning we knew this before the elections, the triple C 15 that were not allowed in. It was a way for the ZANU PF to get a two thirds majority. Once they saw that that failed, they knocked on the door again to try again to come back again to get that two thirds majority. It, it's a disaster for democracy. I don't see any reason for them to be able to pull out now. But Chabangu, if this issue still remains unsorted, Chabangu will continue to do this. He's the main man at the moment. Everybody's listening to him. And um, so we're going to dance on to his tunes. We'll be his puppeteers. He's going to recall until he cannot recall anymore. And just giving democracy on the platter to Zanu PF and they'll continue to do this. Um, no, I don't think they should pull out the ones that are there. I think we should continue to try and to have a voice as well. But I'm more concerned in terms of the um, city council. Uh, the council has been recalled uh, by Chabangu as well. Because what you're doing here is that the public doesn't like you and you're forcing yourself for the public to like you. You've got the lowest vote turnout. You've got the lowest number of people that are voting for you to come in in there. And that mantra to say, as long as I'm there, as long as that being there in, as long as you corner me, I will do anything. It's absolutely unfair because the people within that constitution, they don't like you. They don't vote. They didn't vote for you. They don't vote for you. You've just been voted because of default. So for you to come in and then to be able to take there. So, um, you find most of these MPs that have come in, in there, they won't stay within the constitution where they, the constituents where they've uh, been voted for. They'll probably relocate to a nice posh hotel in Arare, come in uh, in the middle of the night or the weekends and then go back again. And, and the people that they're purporting to be uh, representing will not have the time to see them as well. So I, I don't think they should pull out now. I think it is a time to reflect uh, not only the triple C, but also for the other parties like uh, um, uh, my brother Douglas Monzora, Zapo as well, all come together and with other small parties as well and try to see if we can have a formidable thing. But we keep saying this. We've been saying this since, I don't know, um, uh, 2000 and something to say that we all need to unite. And with the, the more the delays here, we're already talking about 2028. Very soon, we're talking about uh, 2033. ZANOF-PF is still going to be in power. We're still going to be have our egos coming in and then our egos, you know, playing up with us to say, Ndindinechimuti uh, or Ndindinechi, um, the one who's got the people or the one who's got the public. And the other one is saying that the ones who know the politics, yet ZANOF-PF will continue marching on. So we all need to reflect and to literally look at the men in the mirror and say to the men in the mirror, is it the Zimbabwe that we want? Is it the Zimbabwe 
that we continue to have. Despite we've got the best finance minister, um, uh, you know, uh, is it the economy that we want with the best ministers? <laughs> uh, anyway, I'll give back the mic for this morning. Good morning, Asake. <clears throat> Well, thanks so much, Douglas. Oh, just, just by the way, just, just by the way, before yeah. I just go, before I just go, I just want to thank my brother here. I usually don't acknowledge him much. My brother here, Bento here, who's here. My brother Bento happens to live where we, um, with our host here. Bento does a very, 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 very important thing in the community. We might differ on politics on Zanipia, but there's a tournament he's been holding here where we think it actually unites quite a lot of Africans together. Brother Bento, um, I want to really thank you for everything that you do in the community. We know we don't see eye to eye on in terms of the politics, but the football things that you're doing in the community, we really need to say kudos to you, Brother Bento, and uh, I'll give the mic to you, Brother Bento. Thank you so much, uh, Matak Douglas, for that contribution this morning. Guys, guys, if you're just joining us, we're talking about what's next for Triple C MPs in Parliament. Should they pull out or should they remain in Parliament? Let's go to our next speaker. Good morning, Philip. Good morning, Brighton. How are you, Sunny Boy? You okay? I'm right. very well. We're trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, Brighton. Um, uh, if it was me, now I want to say this pretty disclaimer. If it was me, um, I advocate for them to pull out. Why? There was a by-election which was made, supposed not to have happened. Right. Um, then people allowed, you know, no problem, the by-election, just go for it. The youngsters campaign for this by-election. Okay? You are told that, I mean, on the ballot paper, when they are doing paper, paper um, campaign, they tell their um, followers that you see a picture of Bruce Newman on the picture in the symbol of CCC. Okay? So people, they prefer for that. They prepare for that. Come a day before the a by-election, um, the spokesperson for CCC my young brother, Gifty Australias, confirms a um, few hours that our team has verified the papers. All is in order. Tomorrow morning, go and vote for your candidate. Come the day of the election, people, they leave their houses. They find that image which was which they were campaigning for is not there in the in the ballot paper but you brighton you are a manager you send one counter um to staff room and say go and call philip smanga for me you go to the staff room you don't find philip smanga you find it you come back to me and say oh philip smanga can I call Mehluli instead? The manager says, I know. I say to him, Philip. Right. So it means this was well planned ahead that don't worry. We are not going to print. We are going to print so many uh, papers. So this thing was planned. Okay. Remember these people on the 26th of August were chosen by people. Now we have got people who are um, um, just put in the likes of Scott Sabupanya and the likes, the likes of Osanda and Devini. I'm sorry, Sandra is his sister, but I'm, I, I don't advocate for something which is not fair in the country. So, I say we are trying to advocate for um, e-corruption. These people are not voted. They are endorsed. So, if it was me to the leadership of CCC, go back and talk to your um, followers, for the people who campaigned for you, for the people who donated, for the people who worked so hard let us know what's the way forward. But I'm one of those people who is saying, please don't mix up with those people who are endorsed. So stay away from this election. Staying away won't benefit anybody, but it will put an eye to the world. What is happening in the country? What is happening in Zimbabwe? Everyone will be, remember this will be the first time this happens. So everyone will be watching what is happening in Zimbabwe. Sadak is just really, um, 
left Zimbabwe after the election, but things are not working, are not going right. So, to cut him short, so that other people can come in, I say, pull out from this. Pulling out, go and prepare for your for for the next general election, and have a proper 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 constitution whereby this nonsense will never happen again. I will wait here for 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 now, young man. Right on. Thank you. Thanks so much, Philip, for that conversation this morning, guys. Quite interesting there what you're saying there, Philip. You should pull out and go to Congress and have a proper constitution. Quite interesting there. Those that have been shared by Philip Swander this morning. Let's go to another speaker. There. Good morning, Bernard. Good morning, Bento. Well, good morning, Nantasa and Brighton. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank my brother, uh, Douglas, for his kind compliments. Thank you, Douglas. Yeah, of course, we are on the other side in politics. Anyway, the topic is pull out or remain. There's nothing next for the GPC in the part of strategic ambiguity. Strategic ambiguity means doing nothing. And I can tell you, the GPC, they are now old like a rabbit. They've been hit by a blitzkrieg, actually to a military oper operation. They're not going to do anything. The only last vote a portion is ZANBF. And uh, this, look, doing nothing is a strategy as well. And the CC who just going to do nothing is legal. Since this formation, they were doing nothing, and I cannot see them doing anything. No MP is going to pull up because it's life. Remember, that's where the the uh, side of bread is battered. Uh, it's from, from Parliament. So there's going to be more divisions. And I can tell you, this which I mean, I won't get to 2028 because this power is being exfoliated heavily, daily, because of these uh, blunders, schoolboy blunders, especially the American one. I don't know what is happening. This is what happened to a political party, which is structuralist, which is constitutionalist. Which is meant to um, with the need, which does need the reaction. So I don't see the CC doing anything. No one is going to pull up, and Chavango is going to continue recalling them until the whole party is annihilated. Chavango's action is apocalyptic. They will just they will sink the triple C, and no one will come to save them. Thank you. Well, thanks so much, Bernard, for that. But also, guys, I'm asking you this one in terms of if they pull out from parliament, what are the pros and cons from pulling out of parliament? And also, if they remain there, what are the problems that are going to likely to face or benefits that are going to face if they remain in parliament? So what are the pros and cons of remaining and staying in parliament? Let's move on to another speaker there. I see you've been joined by another speaker there. Tawani Spana. Good morning, Tawani. Uh, morning, Brighton. Morning, everyone. Um, I hope you can hear me. So anyway, I'll continue. I hope you can hear me. So I just one point, really. I don't know the implications of pulling out, whether it actually means we are automatically going to have um, fresh by new by-elections, which, you know, I assume it does. If it does, then for CCC, that's a tough one, because all along, their criticism of um, of Chabang has been based on that the uh, you know, the recalls are expensive, or rather the by-election are expensive. So in, in effect, what he has done has caused the money, the, the country to lose money because apparently it's $5 million for the, you know, for the for the elections that, that, that we've just done. So if CCC were genuine when they complained that it was a waste of money, now pulling out means that CCC is now going to Put the country through fresh by-elections, which they themselves have been saying are not necessary because they are too expensive. Some of the people have even said that you know, you know, people have died due to this recall. So I think there is that problem there. So CCC need to sort of to think again and come up with a proper strategy rather than um, a knee-jerk reaction and you know simply saying, well, we're going to pull out. Um, I have all along been of the opinion that they should pull out, but I sort of now think that, uh, you know, having convinced me that what Chavong did was wrong, then you, you have to now convince me that doing exactly what Chavong did is now the correct thing. Thank you, Brighton and others.
Well, thanks so much, Tawani, for that contribution. Let's move on to another speaker there. I see uh, APM 260. Good morning, APM. Yes, hi. Good morning, guys. Um, I hope everyone is good. Um, <clears throat> so, um, I'm one of the people that are hoping that uh, CCC MPs will pull out uh, of Parliament uh, because I think... Um, Zimbabwe cannot be held hostage to immature politics. Um, uh, Zimbabwe has come a long way, and we we still have economic sanctions uh, th that are hindering our pro our progress. And I I really do hope that um, CCC MPs will just let things be and understand that they need to go and sort their house out. Um, <laughs> we don't have time for that because Zimbabwe is a big place. It's, uh, it, it, it's full of people that, that don't believe in what you do and people that believe in what other people do. And I think right now, at this point in time, uh, this this drama that, that is going on mm -hmm. is really an insult to our integrity at Zimbabwe. And we, we are seeing immature politics enter in, 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 into, in, into our great Zimbabwe, which is a disservice. And I, I, I'm I'm actually almost getting tired of uh, of CCC or whatever shenanigans that they always pop in because this is a big country. Not everyone likes CCC. No, okay. There's a lot of other people that love Zanapia. There's a lot of other people that that do trust Zanapia. We cannot have CCC having a monopoly and, and trying to hold our Zimbabwe hostage. I don't care about Chamangu. I don't care about Chamisa. They, they're playing personal politics. Whereas this is a big country made up of 16 million people. We're, we're, we're doing a disservice to, to our country, guys, by, by focusing on little children's immature tips, right? We need to call it out as it is because our Zimbabwe is growing. We have people that fought for this country. We have people that believe in this country. And this is actually getting to a ridiculous point where we are, we are right here talking about immature politics that we know is immature. We're talking about a political party that that's probably less than two years old. No. We are Zimbabwe. And I think it's time for us to all to stand up and say, no, we do not want immature politics. There were no rules that were put in place to register your political parties, and we, we trusted that people were going to be mature in their politicking. But we we now getting to find out that Kidsnet, Mahumwe, it, this is ridiculous. But I love my country. And I would just like to say whatever, whatever you MPs do, don't think that we're dumb as you, as the people that you preach to. I'm, 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 I'm actually livid because this is my country. All right, like let's leave these internal things to internal things, and let's not let them spill over into, in, in onto the national stage. You know, so yeah. I hope those uh, CCC MPs pull out so that we can get to work on fixing our country. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, uh, APM 203, for that connection this morning. Guys, if you're just joining us, uh, talking about what's next for C MPs in Parliament, should they pull out or should they remain in Parliament? And if they pull out or remain, what are the pros and cons for that situation there? Let's move on uh, to another speaker. I see you've been joined by Babon Good morning. 
good morning, Brighton. Uh, good morning, everybody on the space. Uh, yes, uh, I, I get the topic uh, that is uh, 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 for today. Uh, what I can say personally, of which I also wish that uh, the citizens, citizen at large will also support, is that these MPs can pull out. They should pull out, in fact, and leave ZANU-PF with the entire uh, uh, parliament. Because uh, what we are having is a situation whereby uh, even if these MPs remain in parliament, the number, their number, is fewer, and there has been made fewer than it has already been. And therefore, there is nothing that they are going to change. While, at least on the other hand, what is going to happen there is that uh, their presence in parliament will sanitize the illegality and the illegitimacy of the, 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 the parliament that is there. Because all that happened from 23 August right up to this uh, just ended and will be conducted by elections. It's all illegal. It's all illegal for anyone in the world to see that what is happening in Zimbabwe is a circus. And therefore, for them, we voted them in and we are saying as voters, they should pull out even if they, 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 they call by elections to, to, to get that two thirds majority, let ZANU PF do that. Because all we want to do now is to make sure that ZANU PF is exposed to the world. They can come here on spaces, they can go everywhere and say, what, 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 we need the working country. We need them exposed. And therefore, we are urging our parliamentarians to leave those people alone there in their parliament because it has been their parliament, not the parliament for, for Zimbabweans. I've seen, we've noted that even on, on, on these spaces uh, and certain media platform, they have gone up to the extent of creating ghost accounts, pretending or purporting to be a triple C uh, supporters. And uh, why in all in all, they are just trying to... to, to to spread a message to say those uh, parliamentarians should not uh, pull out. We are saying we voted for them in, they should pull out. So we are not going to compromise on that. When it comes to the issue of t a a money loss, they should ask their president, who is purporting himself to be the president of the country, when in actual fact he imposed himself for them. That's the person they should ask. Also, uh, I think what I would say is, they are saying Zimbabwe is being held in ransom by a small political party. In actual fact, Zimbabwe is not held at ransom by a small political party. Zimbabwe is held at ransom by dictatorship. And therefore, if these MPs pull out, they must pull out en masse. Those that remain will remain there at their own peril. And they out urge Zimbabweans at large, together with the opposition leadership, all oppositions, to launch an offensive, to launch a peaceful mindset to say, we are challenging this, even if we are not in parliament, even if we are forming a new parties or we, we are putting structures in place, but still we are going to challenge ZANU-PF while it is still in power. Otherwise, all in all, over and above, I'm saying the best way forward and solution for Zimbabwe is to to, to, to have all those legislators pulling out and leaving out ZANPF to do what they want. Thank you. Well, thanks so much, Bambo, for that contribution this morning, saying they should pull out from Parliament and no one should remain in Parliament. They're quite interesting thoughts that are coming through uh, from people in both of this. But let's move on to another speaker. I see Nama Pasa just joined us. Good morning, Nama Pasa. Uh, before I even um, contribute to this, I, I, I do not want to remain um, um, ignorant. There is some, some of the things that I do not seem to understand. Maybe Umalume or Citizen Z, I'll only mention the names that I'm aware of. 
the pros and cons of pulling out and, and staying in because at times i think uh, we make decisions we make emotional decisions that do not serve us so at this moment i'm really not so sure because all the spaces that i listened to yesterday i could not get out a reason and what ccc will benefit or what zimbabweans will benefit if they pulled out if maybe people who are in the know, who know the, understand the constitution better than I do, could explain so that when people make that decisions, it's going to be an informed decision. Thank you. Well, thanks so much, Nampesa, for that. Yeah, quite quite interesting what you're raising there. Let me ask uh, Zeta to explain to us, maybe, Zeta, I'm going to come to you, Zeta, uh, before I go to Malume, the SG from Zapo there. Zeta, if triple CMPs pull out from Parliament, what are the pros and cons uh, from pulling out of Parliament? And then, will they have a fresh election? Will they have a by-election? What happens there when they pull out from Parliament? At, uh, at the inside, uh, hope, uh, you guys are good, and everyone else. So, I want to start with something that we... we we both know it's an analogy, an example from our childhood. So you have to uh, go with it. Do you remember when we used to go when as children and buy coke drinking? And we go to the shops and say, we want coke. And then the shopkeeper will say, eh, which kind of coke? Then you say, Fanta, I5, I must buy it, I2, then I'm a coke, I4. What I'm trying to say, that's where we are at at this moment in time. The use of the word yeah, is pull out, pull out, pull out. Everyone is, is speaking of it, but they're speaking of it in different uh, things. So, you've got uh, people that are saying pull out, meaning pull out from from parliament. I'm an MP, I'm an MP, I'm an RCC, I'm a councillor. I'm an pull out here, I'm an pull out regroup and go for a by-election. So at the moment you pull out, it triggers a by-election. That means the president is to be allowed by the constitution, is, uh, is forced by the constitution to make sure that there is a repress there is a replacement of the people that have pulled out. Uh, 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 they should only, the period itself is 90 days. So 15 days after the pulling out, he sets a, 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 nomina a, a nomination court and the by-election date. So you've got people that are saying pull out, meaning pull out a, 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 a regroup as a, a CCC party and then contest the by-election and go in to avoid Uchabang. Those ones are talking about Uchabang. So that Uchabang, you cannot recall them, they regroup, they change their name or whatever, they come back, Chabang is therefore is left by, by himself. Those ones are dealing with Chabang. Then you've got the other group that says pull out. This group is not even looking at Chabango anymore, but it's using Chabango to deal with ZAN-PF. It says, pull out from parliament. And then when you pull, when you pull out from parliament, now start to lodge, uh, uh, yes, it's going to take up elections and everything else, but now you're starting to lodge, I'm a protest. You're, you're pulling out to destabilize I know it's, it's a word that we have turned around and, 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 and used in, 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 it seems bad, it's a bad, it's called bad test in Zimbabwe, but that's what it is. You are trying to destabilize Zimbabwe in terms of protests so that you can force the ZANU-PF to come to the table and then they create some sort of negotiations either through uh, Amachechis or civil uh, organizations or ISADAC itself or ZANU-PF itself. You mount that pressure so much because the parliament, you have, you have 100, and, uh, 100 and something people would have come out and about 400 and something councillors, I don't know the number, 400 plus if, would have come out. And then you put pressure to, 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 to the NPF so that there will be some sort of a, a, a transitional government, GNU type sharing of power. That's what they're pulling out is, is putting on. Those two things are what the people are talking about. So I think it's very important when people say pull out, we have to therefore ask, what you, which pulling out are you talking about? Are you talking about pulling out to regroup, to go back? Therefore, you you, you are dealing with Chabango. Then if you go back and win your seats, then you are back in the same system, but now Chabango cannot recall you and job done will continue foot. Or you're talking about pulling out that turns around and forces 
a Zanu PF to come to the table based on protest and 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 and, and he pulling out lay he pulling out not to go back to parliament. He have to have the 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 uh, so called uh, 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 political uh, professions outside are actually turning around and talking about. So if you hear the likes of or or or, or Chan Labo. Uh, thinks a little bit of uh, 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 and other uh, academics. Uh, uh, well, that's what they're pulling out. They're talking about the ability to pull out. Then in the pulling out, to put in what they refer to as a shadow government. That means now you are going parallel to to Izanu e e e e in the midst of protest and the, and, the, and, the, and and demonstrations to put pressure to try and solve a e e e e situation near Kaya. In some in some way, it's not solving as such, but it is reducing it. That is the one that deals with Zanu PF, but use uses Chabangwe's episode that we just went through. But now you are you are elevating the the the, the problem to deal with, with with Zanu PF. The other one, the pulling out, I'll finish up. Only deals with Chabangwe. It does not even deal with Zimbabwe. That means when that one happens. They regroup, they go back. They've sorted out Chabango we're back to the normal politics and everything else. This one is pulling out not to contest. And oh, I had to do the I had to put this. If they do this one, the pulling out to protest, the, it is harder, but they have to turn around and try and gather a lot of, of political parties. So that even when by election is called, the political parties are not going to participate for the betterment of Zimbabwe through these other events that we are, we are seeing, but for the betterment of Zimbabwe, either to sit down on a table and try and solve and reduce the pain that we are, go that we are going through and what we are about to go through. So I, I hope that uh, makes sense with the two types of putting out. Uh, thank you, uh, Sajj. Thank you so much, Zeta, for clearing that out. Quite interesting what you're saying there, the issue of uh, we're trying to break it down to us. Say, if they pull out this way, they're trying to do it. Interesting day, what that is raising. Uh, let's move on to another speaker. The good morning, uh, Zapwes, Jim Chilisa, Anana. Uh, good morning, Brighton. Can you hear me? Yes, you are clear, sir. Please do go ahead with the contribution this morning. You see, Brighton, uh, one of the biggest problems that we have in the country uh, that has manifested now is that uh, most of the times, opposition strategy seems to be anchored on uh, showing the world that is ANU PF is bad. Uh, I think we should uh, move from that. I mean, these people have been power for over 40 years. Uh, any fool can see that these people are bad. There is nothing under the sun that uh, an evil person uh, should do or can do to uh, qualify to be evil. That is ANU PF is not done. ZANU PF has killed people, murdered people, both within ZANU PF and outside ZANU PF with the highest uh, uh, genos uh, uh, number of people killed were killed in a genocide uh, uh, we look at the economy the economy is bad uh look at everything uh, in the country Zanu pf can uh, explain it uh, whichever way and say that uh, uh, it sanctions as whoever but ultimately what we understand what we see is that we should move away from any strategy that seeks to show the world that Zanu pf is bad we know they are bad. And I'm saying this to say, uh, when you look at how these uh, by-elections were conducted, you can tell that there was no strategy uh, behind uh, uh, the conduct of, of, of by-elections. And this is a how. I mean, we have when uh, uh, the by-elections were, were, were called, or rather when Chabang were called people, we tried as a, a opposition to say to uh, our fellow comrades, uh, that this thing is has uh, an impact on our democracy. We need to make a decision then uh, to say, are we going to sanitize the entire process and go to the nomination court or we must automatically collapse that thing? And we'd say to ourselves, if we're collapsing uh, this thing and not going to the nomination court, there must be an alternative strategy to say, we're not going to an election. What is it that we're going to do? But our brothers opted to say, no, in as much as we know, that these people are going to recall us, uh, let's go to the nomination court, uh, they will recall us, they will bar us from contesting against CCC, then we will show the whole world 
uh, that uh, uh, Zanu is bad. The world knows that Zanu is bad. That's what our people must understand. We must not continue to try and uh, show the world that Zanu PF is evil and that PF has captured the country. So that was our uh, that was uh, the biggest mistake to try and politic with with uh, 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 the only strategy being to expose Zanu PF as being a bad party. Expose them to who? Satak is not an opposition party in, in, in Zimbabwe. The AU is not an op op opposition party in Zimbabwe. There are things that we must do as opposition to deal with the ZANU PF, not just to merely expose uh, to them, to all and sundry, uh, that they are bad. Now, where we are, we must understand the consequence of staying in, in parliament uh, for the opposition. Uh, from 2013 to 2018, or right up to 2023 before the election, ZANU PF has had two thirds majority. And in the two thirds majority, we must ask ourselves, what was the benefit of having a, 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 a opposition in parliament when number one, we had bills like uh, the Patriotic Act uh, or the Patriotic Bill say, sailing through when we had the RPZ debt assumption bill, when we failed in the 10 years of the existence of uh, that uh, 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 parliament from 2013 and, and, uh, uh, to 2023, we failed to align the constitution uh, the laws of the country to the constitution but instead we had over 116 pieces of legislation uh, that were were, 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 were were amended instead of aligning zanu pf was busy rewriting the constitution and guess what this midnight rewriting of the constitution were aided by the opposition who were carrying a kangle for zanu pf to see and sanitize the process so as long as the opposition insists that they want to be in parliament what they are doing they are perpetuating uh, uh, the capture of the country by zanu pf as evidenced by some of the pieces of legislation that i have i have uh, 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 highlighted and alluded to you come to the issue of corruption every uh, state organ that was meant to submit audited reports they submitted uh, they submitted reports that shows that there is so much plunder, looting, corruption, a lot of money unaccounted for, a lot of uh, land that was bought using state money unaccounted for. At times, at one point, with aeroplanes that were bought and they, uh, uh, no one knows where they are. So there is a lot of corruption uh, that is going on, the lot of rot, the lot of decay. Our pensioners are being given $30 as a lump sum uh, uh, after working for 30 years. These are things that are happening under the watch of a, a, a opposition who, by the way, become an arm of government once they are in parliament, because we have the we have uh, the, the, the the executive, the judiciary, and parliament. So these are the arms of government. Once opposition uh, 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 becomes part of parliament, they are uh, 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 to blame for whatever comes out of government, because they are part of government. In as much as they say they are opposition to us who are not in parliament, when we are blaming the government. We are also blaming them. And when they continue being there, they are giving us a semblance of democracy. They are giving ZANU PF free reign so that they can do whatever they are doing and say, no, we are doing these things in a democratic space. But what you must understand is that opposition must deliver freedom for our people. And at this particular point, I do not think that parliament or the few parliamentarians that are, 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 are were elected uh, have the capacity on their own uh, to deliver freedom. Our young people don't have pay slips. Our, our, our people are being these proposals of taxes and stuff like that that are, are, are killing our people. And all these things are showing that there is no way these uh, parliamentarians are going to reverse these things. When you read the uh, account by Jeremiah Bam about how there was a midnight kangaroo movie style court session that was held. You can tell clearly that there is a convolution of the state and the party. You can tell clearly that there is a capture of state institutions by ZANU PF and by extension a, a, a government because it is convoluted to ZANU. There is absolutely no way these things can be reversed by a few parliamentarians uh, 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 in Mount Hampton. What must happen if opposition is sincere and genuine? 
genuine in delivering the freedom of our people and not just looking for jobs for a few individuals and not looking for cosmetic uh, 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 successes here and there. I can't hear you now, uh, SG from Zapo. But guys, can you hear me this morning? Zeti, can you hear me? Uh, we can. can you hear me now? Zeti, can you hear me this morning? Please give me a hand if you can hear me. All right. I'm clear from the other guys this morning, but I can't hear the SG we, from Zapo. Zapo, let's try again. We can, SG. can you hear me? We can, can hear the SG. Yeah, we can, can hear you. Can you hear me? All right, I can't hear you, Zapo SG. Let's try one more time. Let me mute you for for, for, for a second, and then I'll try with someone else. Then I'll come back. I'll let you come back again. Let's let me try. Native son of Good morning, Native. Good morning. Good morning, Python. You can hear me. Python can hear me. Uh, uh, Python Native is asking whether you can hear him. But native, we can hear you. I don't know about uh, uh, Brighton's side. I think Brighton is the one having connecting problem. All right. Now let me just um, go on since uh, Brighton cannot uh, um, hear anybody. So what I would say is uh, I, I would really agree with Pumalum and Kalem being a leader, by the way, Bong and Jehuba. But I will agree with Malume USG what he has actually uh, put it out that the more uh, these MPs remain in parliament, they are rather sanitizing the whole process. And therefore, it is uh, a rather a, a call for them to pull out at once, uh, you know, in as far as the situation is, is concerned. But again, uh, it, it comes back to the issue of saying how committed are these MPs to the struggle of the people? Now, uh, it, it's now a test again to the triple C MPs to say how committed are you to the struggles of the people? Because in as much as uh, there is a call for them to pull out, uh, you might as well as bet that there are some MPs within the triple C who do not uh, subscribe to the notion of pulling out, but they rather want to remain in this uh, circus parliament and be part of the circus parliament. And again, what Malumi is saying that in as much as they, re they remain in parliament, they were in parliament uh, before the elections and uh, before that up to 2018, they were there as, um, you know, not, uh, you know, have reduced than PF2 test majority. What did they achieve when they were in parliament? Because, uh, you know, you had all these uh, focus laws being passed by ZAN PF either way, whether they were there or not. So at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself that, you know, when it comes to our situation with the way opposition is, and as much as we know that uh, ZANU-PF operates in a certain way in parliament, uh, what, what's the effectiveness of MPs, opposition MPs, who do not even have numbers now uh, to stop two-thirds majority in parliament for ZANU-PF? The, the, the answer is quite simple. There is nothing. There is nothing at all, unless they want to remain and be part of this whole uh, circus, you know, but we, we are saying that they have to pull out, uh, you know, uh, in as much as this uh, situation is concerned. And coming back to what Zetu was saying, that there are two kinds of pulling out. Pulling out, you need to stop Chabamu, or you pull out to deal with Zanu PF. I, I do not think that uh, in as much as this whole problem, uh, you know, is concerned, Chabamu is much of a, like, a, a, you know, a bigger fish in all of this. Uh, is just uh, something that uh, was just a phase that uh, Triple C had to deal with at the end of the day, but he is not much of a bigger fish. The bigger fish is Zanu PM. And but then we have a problem again with Triple C. And this I will say every time Triple C is uh, presented with two ways, you know, the, you have the easiest way of dealing with the situation, then you have the hardest way of dealing with the situation. The easiest way will sound more, you know, convenient, fair enough. Uh, you can move comfortably through it, but at the end, you have stumbling blocks that will come your way and hit you hard. And they always want to take that way that seems to be more comfortable. Triple C, I have a problem with the fact that they do not want to take the hardest way, which at the end of the day will bring much of a huge impact in as far as the struggle is concerned. Because they, they, they seem to always want to deal with this matter comfortably. It's like almost they want to pet than PF shoulders instead of really bringing about a solid punch. Triple C just seems to be, you know, uh, bringing some jabs 
into the boxing ring, which is something quite really concerning because at this moment, you will find out that they still want to remain in parliament, which is just a small jab. Instead of them having to opt for a pull out, you'll be surprised to, to, to even have uh, some MPs to, you know, to staying in parliament, which we want them to pull out of the parliament that, you know, I would put it in the street way. Magunyiwe, agunyiwe wakas. In the boxing ring. Once. If they have to take a huge punch, so be it. But at the end of the day, they still come back with a bigger punch. Thank you so much. Well, thanks so much, uh, Native Son of Fula. I hope guys can hear me now. I tried to call us now because earlier on, I couldn't hear Malume very well there. Let me go back to Malume. Malume, let me allow you to land and finish your point then give others uh, a chance as well to speak uh, to the topic this morning. The pros and cons uh, for Triple C MPs if they pull out or remain in Parliament. Over to you, Malume. It's up, SG. Yeah, I hope you can hear me now, Brighton, and I'm not sure where I got lost, but uh, on my end, others could hear me, so let me just land. You know, Brighton, any oppressor uh, who wants us to engage him at his terms, rather every oppressor uh, would want to give us a semblance of engagement when we're engaging him at his terms. And this is the mistake that we are making as a country. We want to engage ZANU-PF at their terms. When the ZANU-PF courts say, let's do this, we, 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 we jump. When ZANU-PF uh, tries to orchestrate and engineer things, we, we want to, 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 to go there. And for us to then say there's no ZANU-PF hand in, in this, after reading what Jeremiah Pam wrote about that uh, judgment that was given, that bad CCC candidates to contest, I think would be wasting our time. We know that ZANU-PF is uh, taking advantage of these things as a party, but state institutions should have stayed clear of internal politics. The fact that Zanopi have then robbed in state institutions, uh, st uh, 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 the judiciary and, uh, and ZEC to do some of these weird things shows that Zanopi is not prepared to concede to anything. What must happen now? Every opposition party must pull out from any form of government, local government or, 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 or house of assembly, pull out and mass. Let's collapse this thing and say, this thing is not delivering our freedom. The problem that I have is that we seem to be led uh, by an opposition leader now who generally either does not have a spine or does not walk the talk. In 2018, after claiming that elections were rigged, we were told that we will go everywhere, we will make the country ungovernable. But nothing happened until 2023. What we need now, we need uh, uh, opposition leaders, collectively myself included, to agree that we are now collapsing government because we want to deliver freedom for our people. Because our silence shows the world that uh, maybe there is uh, peace in the country or there is democracy. It's a fake peace, it's a fake democracy. We don't know that when it explodes, what is going to happen. CCC, ZAPO, MTCT, or any other person who are a councillor or an MP must pull out of this thing, collapse government, take to the streets, protest, do everything reasonably possible to uh, 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 steer the country back on course. Nelson Mandela said we can only use the language of peace if the oppressor that you are dealing with understands the language of peace, this language of being pacified by Zanu trinkets of having an MP there, councillor there, must come to an end. We need to change gears and save uh, the, 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 the country, if not for our sake, for the sake of our children. Brighton, some of us are in exile. We want to come back home. Those at home have no salaries, they have no future. Aban to Kabalama life assurance, they have no policies, they have nothing. If you stopped working today, Brighton, there is no way you are going to have a, 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 any policy that can uh, take care of you or life assurance or support system or social services that are coming from, 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 from uh, uh, um, uh, social security nets that are coming from government that can take care of you. And this applies to us, our generation, and that of our parents. And if we're not careful, our children too. We must come to a point where we say enough is enough. We cannot be held at ransom by a few uh, uh, people that are, are in ZANU-PF. Let's collapse this thing and build the country from scratch. Thank you.
Well, thank you so much, Sopo SG, for that contribution this morning. Guys, if you're just joining us, uh, we're talking about the pros and cons uh, for Triple C MPs. Should they pull out of Parliament or remain in Parliament? Remember, a few days ago, uh, Charlton Wende, uh, not up Charlton Wende, one of the members of Triple C hinted on Twitter to say, guys, should we pull out or should we remain in Parliament and defend the vote? And many critics came out there and many comments came out there. And this brings us to this topic this morning. To say, should they pull out or should they remain in Parliament? Let's go to Kaki Jobs. Kaki Jobs, Kakuba, good morning. Uh, good morning, Said. Good morning, uh, Brighton. Yeah, for me, in short, I will say they should pull out. But I want to bring something to you, uh, Brighton. You know, uh, I will start from the top, Uzan PF. You know, Uzan PF, uh, it is the Ave Nevaio, which means there is no one who can rule, who, who can lead that country. Onga Yanga MP. That a sort of entitlement is. I'm not sure if you can, guys can hear Kake Chops, the Kukuba speaking. I can't hear him from my end. Let's move on to another speaker this morning. I seem I seem to have lost him there. He's now a listener. I don't know what happened there in terms of his connectivity. Let's go to Zimapa's atmosphere. Good morning, Zimapa's atmosphere. Hi, Brighton. Um, I hope you can hear me. If you can hear me, maybe we can just also put your hand up. Right. I wanted to say that um, it is it is it is it is an interesting topic uh, that shows us um, uh, how the opposition continues to treat the same issue differently. Uh, they were they 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 they, they went to elections twenty twenty three uh, this year, and then there were assertions that the elections were rigged. Of course, we have what um the poor performance of Zeki, which is undeniable. But will that poor performance uh, come to the level of rigging the elections such that we can say the election was overturned? We are not sure, but uh, there are those who would like to assert. Now, the issue was that, believing that the elections were totally rigged, he wanted to advocate that members of parliament should not go to parliament in protest, and then they should leave ZANPF to do the parliament on their own. Because, yes, it doesn't uh, really makes sense that you say the elections were rigged, then you accept the parliamentarian votes, and then you reject the presidential vote. So it, it wouldn't make sense for your MPs to benefit from the same election which you are saying there were shortages of ballot box, um, ballot papers, and 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 and, 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 and the likes. So from that point, that issue was said. I think maybe it was coming from the top, but the members of parliament who were benefiting from being in parliament didn't adhere to the call of not engaging. They still did engage. They went in, they were sworn in. Um, and thereafter, you would realize that after the recalls, these parliamentarians, they fought to stay in parliament. They did not say, ah, the recalls have been approved by the, by, have, have been approved by the, by the uh, chief, uh, by, the, by, the, by, the, by the Speaker of Parliament and the President of the Senate. They didn't say, so let's just quit, let's just leave it, everything. But they fought tooth and nail, they went to the courts, uh, they tried to say Shabangu is not the uh, interim secretary general. This, all this was, they were doing so that they had one goal. They wanted to hold on to the positions that they had in parliament. And this should, 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 should not be refuted. Not only do they do that, when they lost that fight, they also tried again to go into parliament on the same ticket uh on on, 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 uh, on on this by elections they fought there uh, up until to the last minute of of of, of the of, of, of like the 11th hour of the by election uh polling date as you know so let's not try to look like if there is no two thirds of majority or if the parliamentarians from triple c are uh, opa are just occupying a very minor fraction of the parliament they think that if they pull out the government is going to fall. Let's, uh, th 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 that is, I don't know why people are thinking that that pulling out is going to send a very big message that we are going to collapse the government. You will collapse nothing. The government will continue to progress. Maybe they will even uh, have other violations, even if they put a whole uh, uh parliament. That changes nothing. I actually think that the benefits are staying in parliament for the following reason. Number one, it is important to speak. You can, you, you can be in a group where 10 people are against you and you are the only one who is speaking a point. Simply because you are the only one doesn't mean that you are wrong. But it's, it's, sometimes you can just 
uh, take note of your point or just say it for the record, knowing fully well that nothing is going to change. But that is important because it says the record straight as who you are. If you want to show Zimbabweans that you are the opposition and you are different, go there in parliament, advocate for when they say they want to amend the constitution to increase the presidential term limits, object, pass your emotions to say, I know what, we don't agree on this particular point. If they are going to win because they are the majority, that is going to also remind the Zimbabwean citizens why it is important to make sure that the parliament is not overly ZANPF. It's, it must be somewhere there in a balance. I, I don't even believe that even Triple C should have two-thirds of the parliament. I believe that a normal parliament should be a game of politics. They should be there in the half there. Or maybe it should be a 40-40 and another third party should take the other 20. So that whenever we are going towards a particular legislation or a particular policy or a particular amendment, both sides should matter. But as, as far as it is concerned in Zimbabwean politics, uh, the opposition parties right now, they are so insignificant to make any footnote uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the parliament. They are just there maybe to, 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 to gain momentum, to say, look, if we were many, this is what we could have accomplished. Right now we are just two, three. Put us so that we should be a significant number. And they should, those councils which they are running, they should be, we should be able to compare and say, look at this particular council which Triple C is running. Compare it to this one, which ZANPF is running. And if they pull out, there is not going to be those comparisons. And I also want to say that it 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 it, it also sends to those people who want to, I don't know, maybe the way that I see things, I can be wrong and I can be seeing things in a different way and somebody can correct me. But how I see things, I feel like the opposition politics is centered on the president. It is centered on the presidential vote. That's why you see that if the president doesn't win, the elections are rigged. But if a member of parliament win, they go to parliament, they take their seats, they are sworn in. The same applies. If the president uh, is not happy with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the way things are going, he says pull out. Who does it affect the members of parliament? I also wanted to say that at the end of the day, right now we are saying let us pull out all of us and let us abandon the, the constituents which we are trying to represent. We went to parliament knowing that when you get elected, you have got an obligation to do. But in, in what's happening now, you are abandoning those people who voted for you. You are abandoning your constituents simply because the political party is not happy with how it is being dealt with with Shabang. Shabang is not going there to fight constituencies which are still in parliament. He is fight, he's fight whatever is it. It's an internal fight in Triple C or even Zanbev is involved. But the attack is it's usually on Triple C as a party. And whether Triple C is going to fall or whatever is it, it's a party thing. I don't see why it has to particularly be concerned with the constituents and why people should abandon their post as what the representatives and councillors. That's a, for me, that also goes to just show that if Chamisa is not a part of the government, he wants everybody to pull out. And that sends a very bad message. And I, I, I'm, I'm still saying it is better to be there and be overpowered, but everyone will bear witness that the problem is not that the, our MPs are doing nothing. The problem is that Maybe I've been saying this uh, for, for a very long time. The key to changing and the key to reform to Zimbabwean politics is not putting Chamisa or any op opposition president in the parliament. You can have a Munangago. But what you need, you need a parliament that is very strong, that is balanced, which is able to enforce that system which you want in democracy with checks and balances, where we say as the executive, we are going to hold you to account for this particular action. And somebody who is strategically put in parliament who know what they're doing, they can accomplish these things. And I'm saying, for now, go and make noise. Imagine if Vanafazama and Redangoka pull out, would have been making noise about the budget not being uh, for, for the people, it's anti-people. Of course, we know that they may not be able to change the budget, but they have put it on record that this budget is not in favor of the people. And we agree. So I think that they should be there because that's what they chose to do. It's, 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 it's of course they are so insignificant in, in, in terms of numbers, but that's what people chose to, to, to do. People voted for, all, for an overwhelming number of MPs, that are NPF, a little of them for triple C. If you don't agree with that, try next time not to say that. So if you don't vote for all of us, we're going to pull out. What does that say to, 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 to do? Do you have any respect for the constitution that puts you there? You were there, you campaigned on your own, you went into parliament, you are elected, you're constitutional obligation is to represent the people that elected you but what you want to do is you want to abandon your your, your constitutional duty so that you can make a political statement and you, you, are you now seeing 
some of these symptoms that Triple C as a party doesn't really respect these constitutional values. For a, for a political statement, we are going to abandon constitutionalism. I, I, I don't know if, 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 if what I'm saying is making sense. I think that as a matter of principle, stay for the job that you applied for. You applied it on your own. Stay there in parliament. Work very hard. If things don't work out, just say they're not working out, but I am not the one to blame. Go is why can only keep a mirror gate. If the defense is messing up or if the strikers are not scoring, be able to pinpoint that. But me, I'm doing my job. But look at all those other ones are the ones that are the big debate players. And then I'm innocent. If you can substitute those ones and give me a proper team to work with, and you will be showing this to Zimbabweans. I think um I will now lend that, but those are my thoughts on the on the on the on the issue. Right, thanks so much, Mapa. Atmosphere for that contribution. Hansi, but can can I already keep a mirror packet? Quite interesting contribution they're coming from that atmosphere. Maluma, I see your hand. I'm going to come to you, Maluma, to wrap up. I'm going to come to you, Maluma. Uh, Brian, can I quickly to respond, respond to the chap that this was uh, having the mic just now? People, if Maluma, can I, so that I can give other speakers a chance? I have two more other speakers to, to wrap up the show this morning. Uh, Mr. Host, uh, can you hear me? May I please Is respond I to quiet. the please guy who had the mic can... just now? I can hear you, Maluma. Please do quiet briefly. All right. I'm with Maluma Kangiso this morning. Let's go to Dr. Ando. Dr. Ando, good morning. Can you hear me? Morning. I can hear you, Brighton, and thank you. Uh, okay, so... My contribution is uh, twofold. My, my first starting point is that from a strategic point of view, the opposition should be able to chew gum and walk at the same time. So from my perspective, you are able to stay in parliament and in your council positions and also still be a robust, you know, counter, counter force as an opposition. I don't see it as an either or. Uh, type of thing because I think when you're fighting a battle fight in every avenue in every space using everything you have why would you want to put down your guns and say okay no we're going to fight with stones only or we're going to use catapults or what if you fight with everything you have why on earth would you disarm yourself I think it's ridiculous and to to make it clear why I think they should stay in palace because you know i believe silence and powerlessness go hand in hand uh, from from you know a feminist literature we always insist that your silence and your powerlessness they are the same thing you remove people who can use the platform of parliament to speak the wishes of the people and then there is silence there's an echo there's nothing there's utter powerlessness why would you do that it doesn't make sense and I understand, obviously, that, you know, to effect meaningful change in, in Parliament, you need the numbers. But that doesn't mean that those who are there, if they have the voice, will be ineffective. You need people with a voice. I mean, Temba Mliso was loud, often wrong, but he was loud. It was a platform he could use. It's the same thing. I don't know the caliber of the MPs that are left. Maybe some of them won't be as robust as we anticipate. But that's fine, because... They can be given talking points, right on. They don't have to be experts in every particular aspect of lawmaking or policy making. That's what you've got technocrats for in a party. You give them talking points. You say, this is our position. This is what we want. This is what we want to articulate. That's a platform you use. It's not a platform you abandon. Who does that? It's absolutely ridiculous. And then in terms of what everyone else does who's not within parliament, that's a, a different frontier of the fight. You fight. You know, uh, in, in 1519, this is one of my, my favorite tales. Uh, I'll be very brief. In 1519, there was this commander, you know, who, who was called Hernan Cortes. He was trying to take over Mexico. And, and one of the things he started doing was burning the boats. He would tell his, his armies, we've burnt the boats. We'll either fight or we'll drown. So burn the boats if you want to take the island. So I understand people are saying, no, let's pull out. These are people are saying, let's burn every boat. We want to take the island. But as far as, as, as a strategic, uh, you know, tactic, it, it's not helpful. Five years of silence is five years of powerlessness. Why would you do that to yourself? So those platforms are important. The, the opposition needs to have 
to be in parliament as a platform for them to have a counter narrative, for them to be a counter voice, for them to be actually able to, to speak on behalf of the people. So this, this, you may proceed in this direction, but let the record state, let history reflect that we were here, we objected to this. So, uh, uh, so that's at the level of MPs and at the level of councils. Honestly, I, I, I find it appalling to even think of asking, uh, you know, people at the council level to withdraw. Why would they do that? That's local governance. That's the governance that's really at the heart of the needs of the people. So you're telling me the, the opposition should set people on fire to warm itself, to warm its political agenda. That's cruel. And, and also that's absolutely callous because the hopes of the people are vested in, the, in, in these opposition parties. So like the previous speaker, speaker said, stay in your post, stand your ground. You know, you, you can't abandon post and, and say, oh, no, um, we want to all go and sulk. Because even if, and I know I've had a lot of people in the space saying, oh no, it's strategic, then the international community will notice. Look, the international community doesn't care. They don't care at all. We are on our own. And it's better for us to be focused on saying, where, where, where is it that we can do the best for people in the communities, leading people within communities, caring about water, caring about service provision, caring about electricity, caring about roads. You can't say, oh, no, councils, everybody just let go so that those who we didn't choose in the first place just take over and run amok. It's really irresponsible thinking. So if, if you are a, a tactician, a strategist, fight with everything you have. There's absolutely nothing to be gained from this political gimmicks of let's all pull out so that they see they will really fix them. You're not fixing anything. You're not fixing anyone. ZANU-PF doesn't care. The international community doesn't care. ZANU-PF gunned down people in broad daylight on one August with international media, with cameras on the street. And that Sky News, we say, have, no one's been arrested. No one's in jail. No one was held accountable. And this is the international community that's supposed to lose sleep because you pulled out of parliament to make a statement. That's really naive. Well, thanks so much, Dr. Ando, for that. Quite interesting what you're raising there. Very interesting comments coming through from, from you there, Dr. Ando, this morning. Let me just go through the comments this morning before I give the mic to Malume as well as Ngavuto to wrap up the space for us this morning. Mapoko says, I agree. We need more variety in parliament, more confidence uh, from other oppositions and seats occupied by, by more than two parties. And also someone says, uh, for the first time in history, these parliamentarians should pull out. So we go for plan B and see it's long overdue. And then someone says, lots of respect to you, Dr. Ndo, uh, they're speaking to you, Delta, there. And someone says, it's uh, logical to assume uh, that resources are directed towards presidential vote, I reckon, rather than national assembly uh, votes there. Quite interesting uh, comments coming through. And last comment says, this uh, pullout will totally destroy Triple C. A lot of MPs will refuse to do so. Quite another one tricky there. Uh, when it says, if they pull out, will all MPs agree to pull out? Uh, some will refuse to do that. Then brings us to issue of factionalism and so on. Let's go to another speaker this morning. Mabutu Mapena, good morning. Vunga Yenba. Yes, I, I want to agree with the two previous speakers because the uh, parliament is a theater of struggle and there's no one who says we cannot embark uh, on uh, civil disobedience. Uh, only if you're out of parliament, you need to combine these struggles. You can mobilize your grassroots uh, uh, and embark on civil disobedience while you are fully represented in parliament and uh, in local chambers. So the call for a pullout, in my view, uh, is misplaced because what is going to happen is uh, unfair will simply call the uh, by elections and uh, that that will be it. Life, life will continue. The international community is based with the Ukraine, is based with the Palestine, South Africa, which is the leader of the SATAC region, is dealing with its own internal problems. Is going to an election next year, so no one is going to to worry about what is happening in Zimbabwe. So to advise a uh, triple C to pull out is wrong. What Triple C needs to do uh, is to use Parliament as a theatre of striking, is to mobilise uh, its supporters towards a common agenda which they have defined because there's uh, no evidence that once they pull out, then we're going to have civil disobedience in Zimbabwe. It's not going to happen. Thanks a lot.
Well, thanks so much, Nabu. Just share the point and brief there in terms of speaking to the to topic pros and cons are for Triple C MPs if they pull out or remain in Parliament. Let's try one more time with Zap SG. He was trying to speak at uh, that time. They respond to the Zap atmosphere. Good morning, Zap SG. Once more time. All right, I see it's now a listener there. But guys, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Chambi, uh, you were a speaker at one, uh, some point, and then you dropped. Let me just give you the mic before I wrap up this morning. I'm sending the mic, Chambi, this morning to become a speaker, so you can also add your contributions to the space this morning before I wrap up. Yeah, I was writing solo this morning. My course is away. Uh, so we try one more time with uh, Umalume SG there from Zapu. I'm talking about the pros and cons for Triple C MPs if they pull out uh, or remain in Parliament. I've sent you the mic, SG, to become a speaker again. Let's hope you can uh, connect at this time around let's see one more time if you can connect Hi, yeah, Brighton. Can, can you hear me yeah you can go ahead. Uh, can you hear me brighton yes i can hear you please do go ahead okay let me just uh, maybe explain one thing about the pullout uh, if you understand the history of this country even uh, uh, smith offered uh, our fathers uh, during the liberation struggle, a few trinkets. At one time, remember the country was called uh, Zimbabwe Rhodesia. And I doubt that it would have made sense for us to argue and say at least blacks are there in parliament. There are cardinal foundational principles uh, that uh, when one is elected into uh, parliament or any government position, assumes they are in place. The, these and, and at this particular time, we were saying that these cardinal principles and foundational principles of a, a government have been collapsed. And because we are protesting that, we are not, we are not saying they should just leave uh, parliament and they go and sit somewhere in sulk, number one. Uh, uh, number two, there is a, a notion that you can't respond to what is happening in parliament if you're not a parliamentarian. It shows that we do not understand how to engage parliament. Citizens have a right. The people of Zimbabwe have a right to engage parliament on any issue, even bills. I mean, there's hearings and stuff like that, just to gauge what people are saying. We can do that. But now our objective is not to have a, a nice political statements and grandstanding and uh, articulate issues in parliament. Somebody gave an example of Temba Mliswa. Wonderful example. But what did it achieve? Nothing. Uh, we have had this stalemate for the last a, 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 a 10 years from 2013 we have been here having wonderful people going to parliament saying wonderful things but because zanu pf is closing space for opposition in terms of maneuvering we achieved nothing we have uh, the, the likes of priscilla misaira and wonderful uh, uh, debates in parliament but what came out of that it is nothing it is only a fool ladies and gentlemen that will continue to do the same thing over and over and over and over again and hope that we are, we are achieving something. This thing of saying when someone goes to parliament and says wonderful things and debates and says, hey, the tax is killing people and stuff like that, and we feel pacified, we feel, we feel good about it. These feel good feelings that we are having and experiencing now are the reasons why we will not be able to give birth to our freedom. Let's pull out of this thing and come up with a strategy of engaging government. Because when things go wrong, we are not part of them. But if you are in parliament, I said earlier, you are part of government. When things go wrong, you are also culpable. So we are saying, let's pull out and allow zanu uh, to do whatever they want about uh, their, their win and their victory and focus on other things. Then somebody spoke about the issue of uh, 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 local authority. What is the role of a councillor in local authority besides uh, 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 policy making? Going to funerals and stuff like that is not the role of councillors. Councils are run. The core business of council is done by the, 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 the administrative staff. You have your town clerk and stuff like that. These are people that run uh, councils. And we're saying M councillors at the policy level, the government of Zimbabwe has made it impossible for them to push their agenda of police. So whether they are there or not, uh, they are not able to execute their job. So we cannot say the uh, uh, people are being disenfranchised from a service because councillors are not there. Even if councillors are not there, we have the admin staff that is there full time, the civil service of council that is ensuring that things are happening. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to come to a point where we are saying, what is it that we want? Do we want to have a cosmetic democracy or we really want to fight for the freedom of our people? And parliament at this particular stage 
can just be a platform for record keeping to say uh, 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 Ostanos said this, uh, uh, Sakupanya said that, but will not be able to deliver our freedom. And when we protest against government and we are in parliament, we are actually protesting against ourselves. And that, to me, doesn't make sense. Thank you. Thanks so much, SG, for that contribution this morning. Guys, you're coming to the end of the show this morning. Thanks so much for, for joining us uh, this morning. We're talking about the pros and cons uh, for Triple C MPs if they pull out or remain in Parliament. Thanks so much, guys, for joining in and becoming speakers. Quite interesting thoughts there is. Uh, I love what Dr. Ndo spoke about the, the issue of remaining and also pulling out our local governments and so on. And uh, Malum SG, the, I love what you said, the issue of contributions in terms of remaining. But also, uh, quite interesting conversation we're having there. Uh, pros and cons uh, for Triple C MPs if they remain or pull out of parliament thanks so much guys for joining in uh please tune in again tomorrow morning at half past eight to half past nine as you unpick another current affairs or political issues every day here on site please do follow site on twitter facebook and youtube and to subscribe to our youtube channel as well and follow our programs on facebook for myself brighton movie it's been nice seeing out with you this morning it's bye for now <laughs>